Welcome to the Real Trending Podcast, where we speak to the brightest minds in real estate about leadership, trends, strategy, and more. I'm Tracy Velt. I am the Senior Director of Data and Content for Housing Wire. And today I would like to welcome Jim Tobin. He is the CEO and President of the National Association of Home Builders. So welcome, Jim. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for having me. It's great to be with you and your listeners. Yeah. So I know you just had a, um, a report come out yesterday, and I know you do a plethora of research um, and do a great job with all of that. So I wanted to start with maybe just a macro view of the housing market um, in, for 2024 as it relates to new home construction and um, some, of the, some of the data that you have currently. Yeah, again, thank, thanks for having me. I, I think, you know, new, new, home, new home construction, I, we're still bullish on the market, as, as you know, high interest rates continue to, to really be a drag, not only on, on, on new home sales, but, but, new, uh, but existing home sales. Uh, and, and because of that, a lot of people are locked into their mortgages, especially for an existing home. They're low, locked into those lower rates over the last 10 years or so, um, which means that, that home construction continues to play an outsized role in the for sale market. So we think that continues uh, into next year. We are, we are optimistic that we're going to see a, 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 at least a 5% growth in, in new home construction next year. Um, you know, it, you know, single digits, single digits aside, it, it, the fact that we are, we are anticipating growth means that we do see 24, uh, you know, kind of resolving into a little bit of easing, certainly in the second half of, uh, of the year. Yeah, I, I've been reading some of the economic reports and it, it looks like we're, we're going to be hopefully moving into a little bit of a better market, maybe not a fantastic market, but a better market than, than we've had. Um, I know you reported yesterday that elevated mortgage rates and depressed buyer demand kind of pushed sales down for uh, new home sales down for October. Right. So how much of that is seasonal as well? Well, the census data is already seasonally adjusted. So the, the okay. season is uh, not, not really an impact uh, on this data. But uh, we are seeing a year over year uh, increase uh, in, uh, in, in sales. So that's good. There's still activity out there, but it, it is much depressed. And, and, you know, again, while it's while it's better year over year, it doesn't it doesn't mean it's a, it's a great market, as you said earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And so what are some some of the trends you're seeing in new homes for 2024, specifically, um, you know, price or design or um, size or, or, you know, and others? Yeah. So so uh, townhomes continue to be a, uh, a, a, a an increasing part of the market. You know, currently they're about 16 percent of the market and that kind of, you know, keeps moving up every year. It's just an, it's, it's a more affordable way to use, uh, use land. That's really what it comes down to. You can put more units, which in, it makes them more affordable. Density is something that a lot of cities and localities are looking for. And again, it helps the economics worth work, especially with such, uh, such high land prices. Uh, you know, we're also seeing, uh, you know, custom homes, that market continues to be okay because what you have in the custom end market is a lot of people already have cash uh, to, to buy a home, whether they're moving from, you know, a high cost state to a low cost state, uh, and they were able to sell their homes for uh, for higher market, or whether they're, they're, they've uh, managed to uh, see a, a boon in the stock market. Uh, but but that custom home, which tends to be more of a cash buyer, uh, we're seeing, you know, that will remain relatively stable. Um, I, I think, you know, teardowns is another another area where we're seeing a lot. Again, it's that, that land use. It's it's hard to find developable land, developable land at a reasonable price uh, to pay to, to, to build homes. So a lot, you see a lot of infill, a lot of teardowns. I know uh, I live in Northern Virginia and you see a lot of that in, in the close in suburbs now. Um, and I think, I think you also see energy efficiency. A lot of people are talking about uh, more energy efficient features in their homes. In, in the old days, you had a choice between efficiency uh, and, and granite countertops, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And people still like granite countertops, don't get me wrong, but the government has so many incentives now because of the Inflation Reduction Act a year and a half ago that we, we are seeing people take advantage of that. And they are features that, that, that people like. Uh, so th those are kind of the trends uh, we see, uh, you know, moving, moving forward. Uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, home sizes continue to fall, uh, you know, because people are looking to make ho housing more affordable. So less square footage means a, a less expensive home. And, and that's attractive to people as well. Yeah, and a, a big um, part of the audience for this podcast is real estate professionals, um, brokers, leaders, um, top teams, top top agents. 
And I know they're always looking for ways to build better relationships with builders and work with them. Um, so what are maybe some of the strategies that you could recommend or some things that, um, you know, they can do to really kind of hone those relationships? Yeah, it, it, that's great. I mean, obviously the, the housing ecosystem in the country is, uh, is, is, is obviously uh, locked into one another. And, and, you know, and I just here in Washington, DC, we, you know, our, our greatest partners are the mortgage bankers, uh, the National Multi-Housing Council, the realtors, uh, the, you know, the, those of us who, who, who talk regularly. Um, and so from the kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll turn, term it the grassroots perspective, uh, knowing that your national associations are working hand in glove here, uh, it's important at the local level where, where so many of the of the regulatory burdens uh, impacts are felt at that local that local level because that's where people are developing homes, building them, uh, and then buying them. So is 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 you're working with with our members and and real estate professionals are working with our members. Uh, it's important for everybody to echo the same the same issue. It, it, housing affordability is paramount to people to be being able to afford the American dream of home ownership. Um, it's it's great uh, that you know people really still believe they still want to own a single family home, but the best way to get to a single family home is to make sure you have a, a safe, decent, affordable apartment. And so that ecosystem works through uh, constantly. Um, remember, own, I, in my mind, home ownership is the gateway to the middle class in America. Uh, you, you own your home, you build wealth, uh, you can grow your family with it to a new home, or, or you can save for retirement. There's so many things home ownership so many opportunities that, that open up for you um, and reminding that all real estate professionals, uh, whether you're a builder or you're a realtor or, or a mortgage banker, it's reminding local elected officials that 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 cost is still the main driver of inaffordability, regulatory burdens. You know, how can we lower the cost across the board for people is uh, is is really, 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 really important, especially that first time or first generation home buyer who's trying to get that that, that get on that first rung uh, of home ownership. It's really critical uh, to remind people that we need to be removing barriers and costs from housing, uh, not not making it harder for people to afford housing. Yeah, I know we have a great program and I'm in Florida and we have the, the hometown heroes um, program for yeah. first responders and teachers and yep. that um, to right. give them assistance to to get into homes. Um, are there any other programs around the country that that you can think of offhand that are um, really important for agent real estate professionals to know about? Yeah, I mean, I think anything obviously dealing with financing. So uh, you know, there are tax incentives. I talked about, you know, energy efficiency. So yeah. uh, you know, there, there's ways to uh, to to afford to, to better afford energy efficient uh, upgrades or uh, or or, or uh, features in a home. Uh, F FHA, uh, it's a, you know, the FHA program run out of HUD is really important for for low or zero down payments, uh, helping people again afford afford a house. Uh, you have the you have the USDA. Rural housing program or the VA program you mentioned, uh, you know, hometown heroes. I, I think of veterans as well in those categories. Uh, you know, th there are there are programs out there to allow people to get into home ownership through affordable financing. And I know, you know, any any realtor, or real estate professional, or builder knows those financing mechanisms uh, to help people afford. But those are some of the programs that we we watch very closely. Yeah, and I know that your your organization is heavily um, an advocate for the housing industry in general, um, in addition to to new home construction and home builders and um, the plethora of um, members that you have. So what issues are you currently passionate about or, or what are some of the current um, legislative or advocacy that you're doing um, right now? Yeah, I, I think I think you know. First, I, I think of interest rates. I, we, there will there will be a time when interest rates, uh, you know, come down. We we know that um, that that is critically critically important to um, everything uh, in the moment, right? We've already seen them start to retreat, right? We're down to, I guess I'll call them, you know, lower seven percent. You know, at some point the the floodgates are going to open. I don't know whether that's you know, 6.8% or six and a half or five and a half, I don't know. But I, I do know that as interest rates trend lower, more people are going to jump in the market. You can't time the market. Uh, so so for us, uh, it's if, if you are a, a credit worthy borrower, you, you have money to put down in a house, don't, don't worry about whether you're going to time the market. Uh, you know, when the time is right for you, certainly encourage people 
uh, to get in to get into uh, to get into home ownership. For us, it's about lowering the cost of of that home, that upfront cost of lowering the home. So for us, uh, you know, one of the big things we work on is workforce development. If we can get uh, enough, you know, we do not have enough workers uh, in the construction space to build build all the homes we need. In fact, we're about 400,000 jobs short in construction month after month. And this is going on now close to a decade. And we foresee that labor shortage moving forward. So we're constantly trying to educate parents and kids about the trades. Uh, and Lord knows if, if you've had to hire a contractor in the last couple of years, you you know they're doing pretty well uh, because there's just so few of them. And, and, and we need more, we can get more skilled trades on the job site. We can build ho- houses uh, more efficiently and 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 less expensively. So uh, that's number one. Uh, supply chain issues continue to be an issue for us. Uh, you, you don't you used to talk about lumber over the last couple of years. That's a main component, uh, the bu- main building material component in a home. Now we're talking about electrical transformers, those boxes that either sit on the ground outside a subdivision or on a pole and bring power to uh, to a house. They're a huge supply chain drag right now. In fact, there's you know, a lot of units, whether single or multifamily, sitting idle right now because we can't get power to them. So we're working with the administration and Congress to try to address some of those issues. Um, and, and then it's just, you know, just financing, you know, working with, like I said, FHA uh, or, or Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to make sure that, that there are financing mechanisms out there uh, that are funded by the government uh, that are available to help people afford, afford those homes. But for us, it, it really is uh, about making sure that that home is affordable through any way. And we, we do that with our, we are, we are in a, we are a, a, um, a federation of over 600 state and local associations as well. And in, in town halls and, and county, you know, county centers uh, and in, in state capitals, all we are all focused on driving down the regulatory burdens uh, on, on a home. In fact, Tracy, I'll give you one of our, my favorite statistics. Um, 20, almost 25% of the cost of a single newly constructed single family home is due directly to, to regulations uh, at the local, state, or federal level. And for a multifamily unit, it's almost 43%. So regulatory costs are really what we focus on, lowering those uh, to make to make things easier, uh, make homes more affordable for, for, uh, for Americans. Yeah, um, the first thing you said about trades is so true. I think there, there has been a shift from when I was in school even um, that the trades were somewhat minimized and it was all right. about going to a four-year college. And there's so much opportunity. Uh, I mean, I know even for us trying to find a, a plumber or handyman around here, it, it's nearly impossible. It is. It is. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's, there's almost, there's about 25 different trades that will be on a job site over the course of, yeah. of the, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, seven or eight months it takes to build a home. Uh, and each one of them is critical. And if they're delayed uh, or or uh, or they're working on their job sites or things like that, it's it's tough. And you know, I, I think you know for 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 so long uh, we 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 saw an emphasis in the starting in the '70s for kids to go to a four-year college, and that's how you were going to you were going to be defined as successful in America. I think what we're trying to do is change the narrative. College is not for everybody, um, and you in 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 you know, the trade should not be Plan B for for a kid. Uh, plan, it, it, uh, the trade should be plan, plan A, right? College is also plan A, but it, it's, it, it, but, but allowing people to know that they can have a, a good paying career uh, that provides uh, real growth from, you know, you're, you're learning the trade, you know, as, as a journeyman uh, or an apprentice. And, you know, 10 years later, you probably have your own company, you're tomorrow's op- entrepreneur, uh, you're hiring your own crews. And, and so there's, there's, a, there's a great narrative around the trades right now. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm going to throw a question at you that I didn't I didn't tell you about. It's more a personal <laughs> question, but I ask this on every podcast. Okay. Um, you know, as a leader, I'm sure you've had many many aha moments um, in your career. And so, what is the one maybe most impactful aha moment that you had? Wow, boy, that's tough. So I, I my, my credit HP has, has been on the government affairs side. Um, boy, that's a good one. You know, you you think you see. I'll tell you what. I, I I've really felt I saw everything, and, and this might be a cop out question, but or a cop out answer. But I will tell you, I, I I think Donald Trump's victory was was one of the crazier aha moments I had in my career. Um, I would I would also say that that Kevin McCarthy being ousted as speaker. Yeah. Um, I, I have I have seen some crazy things. Um, uh, I've seen it. You know, impeachments. Uh, I've seen everything. 
And that was the one, I think not so much that he got kicked out. Yes, that was a moment, but that the Republicans didn't have a plan B for, for about a month. And uh, that, that was just uh, kind of a, a, a rewrote in my mind, kind of where politics in America is. And considering that, you know, we're all advocacy organizations yeah. uh, and that, you know, a lot of our job is spent making sure that Congress and the White House and the mm-hmm. regulatory agencies are functioning uh, and working towards, uh, you know, housing affordability and, and, so, and support housing, you know, knowing that politics is just getting away of, of real policy making, um, you know, maybe not a surprise, but yeah. those are just some of those lightning bolt moments you talk about. How have you had to adjust to that? I mean, as an organization? Well, we, we had a great relationship with, with Speaker McCarthy uh, and his team. And, and so uh, all of a sudden you're, 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 you're thrust into uh, a new speaker that, that we have. Our, our members in Louisiana have a great relationship with Speaker Johnson. Uh, so it's building that relationship uh, here now because, uh, you know, it is a prominent role. Uh, you you got to build those relationships. So we're, we're doing that. So that's and finding out what what he knows about housing, what his staff knows about housing and, and where we can pull those levers back home. You know, do we have a builder who maybe built his home? Does is he is he you know, he's been a, a you know, a very strong supporter of the Job Corps program, which is a, a Department of Labor a job training program that we participate fully in. Uh, you, and we're working. We have a fight on, on, on funding for that right now. So knowing that he's a supporter of, of the Job Corps program is important. So it's just getting to know him and, and finding out what resonates with his staff, what, what, what issues where we don't agree. But it's, uh, you do that with every new Congress. Uh, that's, what, that's what keeps government affairs fresh. But uh, that's been, a, that's, that's been you know, one of the challenges we have moving forward. So in your opinion, um, what can be done? And I'm looking for more specifics. Um, what are some of the things that can be done to improve housing affordability from a legislative point of view? Yeah, so uh, I think I think part part of it is uh, is, is I, I, so so Tracy. Here's the here's the thing. I, I, we have members of Congress all the time, or, or mm-hmm. lawmakers always say, "Hey, what what can we do?" They're always looking for the silver bullet to fix anything and get right. it off their plate and move on. What can we do? And I tell them this all the time. Our, our members don't necessarily want the government to do anything. They want the government to get out of the way. Mm-hmm. I think we spend most of our time fighting against more regulation. Uh, or trying to improve the regulations we have. I'll give you an example. At local levels, mm-hmm. uh, the permitting process to get a project from you know dirt to a, 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 a finished structure for sale is incredibly burdensome. It's timely. Uh, and so what we do, we spend a lot of time at the local level trying to get governments to speed up their processes. You know, permitting shouldn't take 180 days. You know, either we need to hire more people or we need to be a little bit more uh, a, a little faster in our processing because time is money when it comes to real estate. All our, all our listeners know that. Um, so it's, it's those kind of things from a legislative uh, perspective. Uh, you know, for us right now, it's trying to it's trying to make sure that the a Job Corps program that I spoke about is fully funded. It, it trains thousands of, of kids every year into the trades. And I mentioned, you know, we have a dearth of, uh, of, of, of skilled workers in our industry you know, trying to make sure that we are uh, we're, we're working on those those issues, and a lot of times we just we, we play a lot of defense. That's what a lot of people don't understand about government affairs. It gets push, push, push. So many times we are trying to stop uh, bad pieces of legislation, um, and you know, I've never met a member of Congress who's anti-housing. Never in my career. I've never met anybody who's anti-housing. Everybody wants a roof over their heads, uh, but boy, there are some really bad ideas out there, and it's incredibly important for us. Uh, as as an advocacy organization and all of our friends in housing, to make sure that 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 while well intentioned, some ideas just have really bad impacts on housing and housing affordability. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's talk positively about yeah. opportunities. What do you see as some of the opportunities in the market in maybe the first quarter, twenty twenty four? Well, I, I think if, if, if we continue to see kind of this economic rebound, we continue to see the, the bond market uh, get back to more normalcy. And we, a lot of people talk about the spread between the mortgage, the mortgage rate and the 10 year treasury. And if that spread can come down right now, I think it's it's two or two and a half times. It's 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 it's, it's historically large. Uh, if we can get that back down to balance, which is about one and a half point spread, that's when we really start getting into that uh, a mortgage rate of you know probably six and a half percent. And I am optimistic that we're trending that way, and that may start to unlock the market, uh, and that would be good. I, I think as, as rates come down, 
we're going to our members use something called acquisition development and construction lending. Those are over 10. Those loans are over 10 percent right now. So, again, is, is, is that as rates start to come down and more normalize, I think we'll see lending free up. I think we'll see uh, builders being able to take a little bit more risk right now and spec in, in spec homes um, and, and prepare themselves for what I hope for is a really robust second half of next year as rates continue to fall. And, you know, we'll see what the Fed does in their fight against inflation. But, you know, last last month's pause and the and the and the. Uh, the dialogue coming out of the Fed leads me to believe that uh, the first quarter of next year could be that, or maybe in the first two quarters, that correction phase. And then we really start taking off in tw- at the end of 24. Yeah, it's funny when um, interest rates started rising. I remember the big thing was, well, when they get back down to five, it'll unlock <laughs> the market. Now it's now it's six. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if we'll see 5% in the, yeah. in the next little while. But I, but I will say this, the, the, the demographics for, for housing, for home construction, in this decade are mm-hmm. off the charts. We, we, yeah. There is a, a large cohort. I, I believe it's, I think it's the millennials. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong on that. Um, but they, the, that, that large cohort is coming into their prime home buying phase or fo- home buying uh, age. Yeah. Uh, and we know that people still want homes. We know there's pent up demand. Mm-hmm. It's been tampered by these high interest rates. I think the second half of this decade uh, is really going to be gangbusters for housing. Not only that, but policymakers see housing as uh, the inaffordability of housing right now. Uh, I hope they see it as a campaign issue uh, when you have kids who can't afford a home coming out of college or or kids living in parents' basements uh, or people who just want to move for for economic purposes. Maybe there's a job on the other side of the country that would be perfect for them, but they can't afford to leave their 4% mortgage rate for a 7% mortgage rate. That's when I think is, is, is all of this kind of settles out over the next year and a half, I really think that we're going to have uh, a really good story to tell, uh, you know, between now and 2030. I think all of us in the housing industry were, are hoping for that. Yeah, <laughs> so definitely. definitely. Right. Um, finally, just any last word about any special projects or advocacy projects that you're working on that you um, want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, I, we, we talk about Job Corps. That's that's a big one for us. Um, you know, I, and I think looking forward into uh, into 20. 24 in particular, it's an election year, which means generally legislation starts lagging. They, they just try to get out of Dodge and, and get home and campaign. So for us, it's it's making sure that we are raising housing at the local level as well as the national level to make sure it's a campaign issue. It's really important to have lawmakers back home talking about housing affordability. That is as, as bread and butter an issue as anything, as gas prices, um, and whether it's rental or ownership. Uh, making sure that lawmakers are talking about it and, and 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 aware that there are some policy prescriptions out there to solve the affordability crisis, and then and then it'll be you know, you know what what who who wins the the House and Senate next year that certainly is up for grabs, and then of course the presidency in in 2024 that's a big one and uh, you know we're, I watch polling all the time and I'm anxious for the primaries to get started uh, early next year and, and find out where we're headed because. You know, the, the nice thing about working, uh, you know, for an advocacy organization is every two years, whether it's Congress or every four years with the White House, there's a whole new slew of people to know, a whole new a bunch of people uh, to, to share your issues with and, and, and potential changes. So uh, it's an energizing time, I believe, for our industry. Yeah, it will be definitely an interesting election this yes, year or sure, next year for sure. Yes, so. it will. Well, Jim, thanks so much for joining the Real Trending Podcast. We really appreciate all your insight on the market and everything that is going on right now. Thanks for having me. It was great. Enjoyed the chat, Tracy. Thank you. 